Hello, welcome to Astronautics for Exploits. This is Dr. Ayashola Ogundele. Mass terraforming proposals, methods, and strategies. The focus points of my presentation are as follows Mass terraforming, mass terraforming proposals, methods, and strategies. For several decades, through science fiction, scientific studies, and research endeavors, various methods and strategies of transforming planetary environments into forms suitable for humans have been presented. In 1898, H.G. Wells, in a science fiction novel, The War of the Worlds, which is the first great alien invasion story, described the arrival of the Martians on the Earth fire large cylindrical spacecraft launched from Mars and how they plan to transform the Earth's ecology for possible long-term habitation. Similarly, in 1930, in his book Last and First Men, an imaginative novel that contains pioneering speculations about the nature of evolution, terraforming, genetic engineering, and the savage, progressive nature of man, Olaf Stapleton described how descendants of humanity terraformed Phenos after Earth becomes uninhabitable. In 1950, a fusion of terraforming Jupiter's moon, Canimed, into an agricultural settlement was presented in Robert Erling's novel, Farmer in the Sky. Since the beginning of Space Age in the 1950s, the concept of terraforming planets is receiving high interest from space enthusiasts, government space agencies, and private space agencies. Various proposals, methods, and strategies have been proposed for mass terraforming. The ideas are all based on creating mass that looks like Earth and habitable so as to aid long-term colonization of the mass by humans. One of the methods is to release carbon dioxide gas trapped in the Martian surface to thicken the Mars atmosphere and act as a blanket to warm the planet. In a bid to achieve the notion of terraforming the inhospitable Mars, efforts are ongoing to develop cutting edge and state of the art technologies. Mars terraforming. Terraforming Mars is one of the great dreams of humanity. It is the process of making mass habitable for terrestrial organisms. Through mass terraforming, scientists hope to convert mass into an Earth-like planet, providing an atmosphere within tolerable limit. The picture here shows artist's concept of a terraformed mass. Mass terraforming proposals, methods, and strategies. There are various proposals, methods, and strategies that are mapped out for mass terraforming. The proposals and methods are use of orbital mirrors, setting up of solar powered greenhouse gas producing factories, importation of ammonia, importation of hydrocarbon, albedo reduction, and mass atmosphere protection. Each of these is explained as follows Use of orbital mirrors. Large orbital mirrors that will reflect sunlight and aid the mass surface are under proposition. The mirrors, which could be made of thin aluminized PET film, could be placed in orbit around Mars to increase the total insulation it receives. An orbiting array of reflective balloons, which focuses sunlight onto the surface of Mars, is shown in this picture. The large mirrors are to be placed at strategic positions. That are 100,000 miles from Mars. The mirrors are to reflect the sun's radiation and heat the Martian surface, and thereby increasing the Mars surface temperature. The picture uses concept of terraforming the Mars. The use of orbital mirrors, the statite. The mirror is proposed to be positioned as a statite, using its effectiveness as a solar cell to orbit in a stationary position relative to mass near the poles to sublimate the carbon dioxide ash sheet and contribute to the warming greenhouse effect. The main concern of this proposal is the difficulty of launching large mirrors from the earth. Possibility of manufacturing the mirrors in situ in space is being considered. 
The picture here shows a space reflector. Setting up of solar powered greenhouse gas producing factories. This is a proposal for thickening the atmosphere of Mars and in turn raising the temperature of the Mars planet. There is an ongoing plan to set up solar powered greenhouse gas producing factories on the Mars. The picture here shows Mars terraforming using gas producing factories. For several years, humans have been using solar energy to power a variety of things such as home, appliances, and a host of others. Based on humans' experience on inadvertently releasing tons of greenhouse gases into Earth's atmosphere, which some believe is raising the Earth's temperature, scientists are proposing the setting up of solar-powered gas-producing factories to release greenhouse gases into the Mars atmosphere. The picture here shows greenhouse effect of solar radiation on the Earth's surface, caused by the emission of greenhouse gases. The main purpose of the gas producing factories to be set up on the Mars are to pump out methane, carbon dioxide, and other greenhouse gases into the Mars atmosphere. The greenhouse gas factories will either have to be ferried to Mars or made out of materials already located on the Mars. In order to transport the machines to Mars, they will have to be lightweight and efficient. These greenhouse machines will mimic the natural process of plant photosynthesis, inhaling carbon dioxide and emitting oxygen. Illustration of the use of solar power and energy generation on the Mars is shown in this picture. Importation of ammonia is another method that is being looked at for Mars terraforming. One method of augmenting the Martian atmosphere is to introduce ammonia. Large amounts of ammonia are likely to assist in frozen form on minor planets orbiting in the outer solar system. It is proposed to redirect the orbits of the smaller ammonia-rich objects so that they collide with Mars, thereby transferring the ammonia into the Martian atmosphere. Few of the red planet based on elevation data from NASA's Mars Global Survey as Marina 9 obeys the mass is shown in this picture. The space scientist Christopher McKay and Robert Sibling, the authors of the case for Mars, proposed a more extreme method for greenhouse and Mars. The scientists believed that holding large icy asteroids containing ammonia at the red planet will produce tons of greenhouse gases and water. The picture here shows terraformed Mars. Ammonia is not stable in the Martian atmosphere. Any imported ammonia that did not break down will be lost quickly into space. If it is possible to smash an asteroid of enormous size into mass, the energy of one impact will raise the temperature of the planet by 3 degrees Celsius. The picture here shows solar power system at the Mars Desert Research Station. The sudden raise in temperature of Mars planet will melt about a trillion tons of water, which is enough water to form a lake with a depth of one meter that could cover a larger area of the Mars. Several of the impacting asteroid missions over 50 years will create a temperate climate and enough water to cover 25% of the planet's surface. However, the bombardment by asteroids, each releasing energy equivalent to 70,000 one megaton hydrogen bombs will delay human settlement of the planet for centuries. The picture here shows Mars Ice O, which is designed for a Mars space. Importation of hydrocarbon is another proposal. Another way to create a Martian atmosphere will be to import methane and other hydrocarbons, which are common in Titan's atmosphere and on its surface. The methane could be fented into the atmosphere where it will act to compound the greenhouse effect. The picture here shows illustration of plants grown in a hypothetical mass space. Like ammonia, methane is a relatively light gas. It is in fact even less dense than ammonia and will similarly be lost into space if it was introduced and at a faster rate than ammonia. Even if a metal could be found to prevent it escaping into space, Methane can exist in the marine atmosphere for only a limited period before it is destroyed. The picture here shows various components of the mass at post propulsor. Albedo reduction. 
Reducing the area of the material surface will make more efficient use of incoming sunlight in terms of heat absorption. This could be done by spreading dark dust from Mosmos, Phobos and Deimos, which are among the blackest bodies in the solar system. Abiro reduction could also be done by introducing dark extremophile microbial life forms such as leeches, algae, and bacteria. The ground will then absorb more sunlight, warming the atmosphere. The picture here shows a hypothetical terraformed mass. If algae or other green life were established, it would contribute a small amount of oxygen to the mass atmosphere, but might not be enough to allow humans to breathe. The conversion process to produce oxygen is highly reliant upon water, without which the carbon dioxide is mostly converted to carbon hydrates. The picture here shows escaping atmosphere on Mars. Mass atmosphere protection. One key aspect of terraforming mass is to protect the atmosphere from being lost into space. Some scientists hypothesize that creating a planet-wide artificial magnetosphere will be helpful in terraforming the mass. Scientists believe that it is feasible to do that with current technology by building a system of refrigerated latitudinal superconducting rings, each carrying enough direct current. The picture here shows self-portrait of Passifrance rover. For more information, contact Astronautics for Exploit. You've been watching and listening to Mass Transforming Purposes, Methods and Strategies, presented by Dr. Ayanshola Ogodele. With the focus points, Mass Transforming, and Mass Transforming Purposes, Methods and Strategies. Thank you.